Lee. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Admissions here at Oregon State University. Um, and I am joined uh, by two of my friends and colleagues, uh, Colleen Kniff. Colleen is our Director of Scholarships. So you'll be, I know, anxious to hear from her uh, to understand kind of what you've seen as far as uh, scholarship awards. Um, Colleen will also be talking a little bit about financial aid in that process. And then we're also uh, joined by Blake Vodder. Blake is our Senior Associate Director for Marketing and Recruitment in the Office of Admissions. Uh, and he is mostly our kind of uh, DJ uh, on the controls here. So uh, he may be responding to some of the Q&A uh, and he'll make sure that he uh, kind of moderates, uh, feeds Colleen and I uh, questions as we go. Uh, so let me, let me just start by saying one, congratulations. Uh, you're, if you're on here, I assume that means you've been admitted. Uh, if not, you might have joined the wrong Zoom, uh, Zoom meeting. Uh, but congratulations on your admissions to Oregon State. Uh, we, on Friday, I guess, uh, most of you probably saw your notification that you were admitted or maybe over the weekend. Uh, but we admitted your part of our kind of first group uh, for fall 2021 uh, to be admitted. And uh, you might have also noticed that you were a, a bit of a guinea pig group um, as we've launched kind of a new, uh, a new system uh, and so forth, which we're going to talk about uh, Beaver Basecamp. Um, so uh, congrats. Thanks for taking the time out to be here. Uh, I do want you to know that we are recording. Uh, this particular session, um, you are uh, you are all um, silenced and not on video, so that that's good. Uh, but um, as it relates to the questions that you post in the Q and A, uh, we'll keep our presentation here to be, you know, pretty general um, things that pertain to to most all of you. And if you have questions, which you will, uh, if you have questions that are specific to you. Uh, then uh, I would will be giving you some uh, some contact information so you can reach out to us and we can address those uh, personally. So just I guess all that to say, be careful with what you post in in the Q and A. Uh, let's see. So our session tonight, uh, which we will probably go between forty five minutes and an hour, uh, is all about kind of next steps in the. Uh, in the process of enrolling at OSU. Uh, first, we want you to know that we don't pretend to think that every one of you is ready to sign on the dotted line, so to speak, right now. Um, and the next steps that we're talking about <clears throat> are really the things that you want to do, you know, so long as Oregon State is what, still on your list of schools that you're, um, you are considering. Uh, and then you'll get to this kind of magic date, which is usually May 1st, um, and all the schools that you're interested in, you know, it's at that point that you really need to make, make a decision. But the next steps that we're going to be talking about here tonight are things that you should be doing, again, so long as we're still on your list. And that way, you've done everything and you're kind of ready to go uh, when uh, things start to happen after May 1st around orientation and, and so forth. Uh, like I said, we won't cover a lot of uh, questions that are too far into the weeds, but we encourage you to reach out to us on those sorts of uh, questions. And we will be recording this uh, and have it available probably on Beaver Base Camp, um, you know, if you need to refer back to it. But this is just the beginning of, the, uh, of this process. Uh, this won't be kind of a one and done type presentation. We'll do these sorts of presentations and uh, they'll be timely based on when we do them. Uh, there'll be plenty of other opportunities to learn more about OSU and why you'd even choose OSU, those sorts of things uh, down the road. And we'll talk about um, some of those virtual uh, opportunity, opportunities for you. Okay, so with that, uh, I've introduced us. We wanna uh, have you kind of learn more about who you're sharing the virtual space with. And so Blake is launching our first poll. Uh, answer to the best of your ability, Rocky Mountain States, I'd put yourself in the West Coast there. Um, do your best. Let 
All right. So it looks to me like very, very heavily West Coast uh, this afternoon. But this is pretty reflective, I would say, of, you know, our student population in general. It's heavily West Coast, um, Washington, California, uh, Oregon, Hawaii. That's where most of our students come from. But then we get students from all over as, as well. All right. Next poll, Blake. All right, so what are you thinking about studying? And this is by our academic colleges. So, you know, every major falls within one of our academic colleges. If you're not sure what your major belongs to, don't sweat it. Uh, and you'll notice, I think at the bottom there, you've got an option for folks who just aren't sure yet. And that's, that's totally fair too. Okay, a lot of, a lot of STEM students in here. Good to know, okay. Next poll, Blake. All right, we're just looking to find out if there's any other uh, beavers in your family. All right, a lot of first time beavers. I um, want to acknowledge that, you know, if you've got, well, any more than one, you've, you've sent a few checks here. <laughs> so uh, thank you for all of that. All right, very good. Uh, next one, Blake. And this one, you can choose as many as you want. Just getting an idea of the things that you're excited about uh, as you think about OSU as an option. Show a little love to be Benny the Beaver there too. Should have had Benny. We should have had Benny on our Zoom. The problem is, you know, a mascot doesn't say much. So you're like, you're on mute, Benny, you're on mute. All right, very cool. Well, you know what? Uh, maybe your parents looking over your shoulder there, but uh, we're glad that you're choosing a university because we have your majors. That's always a good first sign. Uh, all right, Blake, was that the last one? I believe it was. Yep, that's it. Okay, very good. All right, well, thank you for indulging us there. And that gives us a little bit better idea of who you are. Uh, you know, the, the downside to these, I don't have to tell you, is that, you know, we don't, one of the great things about the college search process typically is that, you know, you're also meeting students, other students going through this as you go. And so I um, want to just acknowledge uh, that one, uh, we prefer not to do it this way, but dealing with what we've got. Um, and that, as uh, we offer more virtual opportunities um, going into the winter and the spring, there'll be more opportunity where you as uh, prospective students can actually uh, you know, interact with each other. So um, stay tuned for those sorts of opportunities. All right, uh, let me close there. I'm already sharing my screen. Um, so as I mentioned, um, talking about next steps uh, and wanted to start with just what are the best resources for you as you uh, try to keep track of what you're supposed to be doing and when. Um, and the absolute best resource is probably Beaver Basecamp, which I'm gonna talk a little bit more about. Um, I'm hoping you've already been into Beaver Basecamp. I assume you've been in there, but if not, I'm gonna give you a, a little bit of a tour. Um, and then know that we've also got, uh, you know, obviously our admissions website, there is a special page uh, related to next steps. And that may be helpful for you because in Beaver Base Camp, you know, it basically says here's what you need to do, but it doesn't have a lot of the description. If you're wondering what it is, for example, um, our admissions website and that next steps page um, it might help clarify things for you. Mentioned we're going to have a lot of virtual se uh, sessions going through the winter and spring to keep you on track. We'll talk more there. Uh, probably your second best um, resource is your admissions advisor. So your assigned admissions representative. And in Beaver Base Camp, and I'll show you where, 
uh, that person's picture, that person's contact information, direct contact information is there. And so if you have questions at any given time or concerns, uh, you know, that's probably the first place you want to reach out, uh, reach out to. Uh, and, and they're assigned to you, um, if you will. Um, so uh, they're eager to hear from you. They, uh, your, your admissions advisor, in the spring will be doing what are called Beaver briefings, which you know, everything's beaver uh, around here, obviously. Uh, but beaver briefings are uh, individual appointments. Um, so we'll have virtual events, you know, which are geared more towards groups or large groups. And these beaver briefings, especially as you start to, you know, get close to making your decision can be important. And I would encourage you to, uh, you and, and your family to schedule one if you have, um, you know, some real in-depth in the weeds uh, questions. Give you our, our general admissions email. Um, not sure that would be the first place I would I would email, right? We get a lot of email. Um, uh, and then you've got, uh, dare I give it to you here, uh, my personal email. Uh, absolutely, if you've got questions or concerns, uh, I wanna hear from you. Uh, so uh, we'll, I'll give you that again here at the end. Okay, so Beaver Base Camp, again, this is your portal uh, where uh, now that you're admitted, you're going to see kind of your current status, uh, what you have and haven't done and what we still need from you, right? Um, it also is a tool for you to make changes. So if you wanna change your major, for example, um, it also gives you contact information. So you can see over here on the right, uh, Blake's uh, glamour shot here, uh, and uh, you might see Blake's, uh, he might be assigned to you and you'd be able to reach right out to him uh, via email or uh, his uh, direct phone, phone line there. Uh, this gray bar, which shows up on everyone's Beaver Base Camp is, is again, kind of your current status as it relates to admissions and enrollment as it relates to scholarships and as it relates to financial aid. Um, so you can go here and you can see basically what we have on file for you. And in some cases actually go in and change or get more information about, uh, about those things. And Colleen will talk a little bit more about the scholarships and, and financial aid uh, here in a moment, but you can see um, any general scholarships that you've uh, been awarded uh, a link to go out and review the terms and conditions and the additional details uh, for financial aid, if we've received your FAFSA or not. And here uh, you'll be able to see if maybe we've gotten your FAFSA, but you still owe us some information that we need to, uh, before we can actually uh, produce a financial aid award package for you. Uh, these account tools allow you to change things or add things just to keep us up to date. And the really important one here is this one that says update application. So you can do this even after, after you've submitted your application or after you're admitted, you can go in here and update things like the term that you plan to start. So if you need to push it out a term, you can do that here. If uh, you need to change your major, uh, you can do that here if you need to add, if you want to participate in the degree partnership program with one of our uh, partner community colleges, you can add that here. And that update application tab does, you know, a, a number of those different things uh, for you. So underneath that, then you've got uh, a couple of different checklists. You've got one that's specifically for financial aid items. Uh, and you've got uh, one here that is kind of everything else. Uh, these are going to change over time. So uh, there will be, and we're gonna talk about that, but there are gonna be some things that you can do now. Uh, and so you can go, you can click here and it takes you to the place where you can go to do that step. Um, and there will be some things that just aren't ready for you to do yet. Um, and again, we'll, we'll uh, talk a little bit more about that. The other thing I want to point out here is that, you know, you, you can't do every step that we list here in kind of in this same system. So 
So sometimes our systems have to talk. So you might do something like register your own it, and it's not going to immediately reflect here, right? It may take a couple of days. Um, and as we kind of ramp up our, our system, um, may take a few more than that, but you know, rest assured if you've done it, it will eventually clear here. And of course, right now you've got plenty of, of time, you know, before things have to be done. Oops. Uh, at the, towards the bottom of Beaver Base Camp, you'll see a number. Of, these are just like promotional things, things we want you to know, the ways you can explore more. So you can see, we, you know, there's a link to our virtual events and you can see kind of the menu of options there. The other one I'll point out here is uh, you won't see housing and dining as one of the checklist items because those applications aren't available yet. But we do want you to be exploring the options within our housing and dining, what, what the rooms look like, the different types of floors, buildings, meal plans, that sort of thing. So if you clicked on that, you'd, you, know, you could go exploring um, those options now. Okay, so I, I've, the next two slides here are broken down by key things that, key steps that you can do now. So you'll see these on your checklist. And then followed by things that will be down the road. So uh, I'm gonna put these two slides up at the end as well. And they're definitely good ones to take screenshots of if you'd like, uh, but I'll kind of fire through some of these. Um, some of these we're going to talk more in depth about. So just know that I'm not skimming over them. Um, one to explain is signing up for Owned. So Owned is basically your OSU student account. When you sign up for OWNED, you're, you're not, you know, declaring your love for OSU or confirming your enrollment, doing anything like that. Um, you just need to get kind of claim this account so that you right now can look at scholarship details and financial aid, uh, your financial aid status. Um, so know that you do want to do that. It, there's a reason we have you do that right away. Um, similarly, you can sign up. You don't have to, but you can sign up for Duo right now, which um, is just many of you probably use like two-factor authentication, um, you know, for your school. Uh, but it's, it's just a safety measure. Um, and so if you're going to get into our systems, we want you to be safe and make sure nobody else can log in as you or steal your information, that sort of thing. Uh, Colleen will talk more about FAFSA uh, and scholarships, but you'll be able to uh, be able to view and accept those sorts of awards um, in Beaver Basecamp, and you'll see some of those checklist items in there now. Uh, you can obviously go in and look at our virtual events and sign up there. Um, you're uh, you'll also see a checklist item that says, I think like confirming your enrollment or update your enrollment status. And um, you are able to, you know, if you're getting an eager beaver and you're ready to say, I'm, thanks for admitting me, me, I'm planning to come. This is where you'd go in and kind of declare your love, so to speak. Um, and, uh, but, it, but it's a two-step process. For many of you, confirming your enrollment means you also need to put down a $200 deposit, which we'll talk about. Um, you can't actually make the deposit payment until January. So it'll, it'll tell you that in there, but you can actually say, yes, I'm coming. And then we'll let you know when you can make that $200 deposit. Uh, the last thing I wanna mention, cause it's not covered elsewhere is that um, for those of you admitted to Honors College, you will see a checklist item here um, that asks you to, if you essentially want to hold your spot in the Honors College. Again, you're not signing in blood. You're not even really saying you're coming to OSU. You're just saying, hey, Honors College, I want you to hold my spot for me. Um, and you can say yes, you can say no, or you can say, you know what, I'll tell you later. Um, and either way is fine at this point, but if you know you wanna hold the spot, then um, you wanna complete that checklist item. All right, uh, so down the road things, these are things that, are, that aren't going to show up in your checklist now, uh, but 
want you to know that they're coming. Um, one is the housing and dining application. Uh, that will uh, be on checklists uh, by February 10th. But again, we want you to go out and explore the options uh, before that goes live. Uh, the, you, you will eventually be able to sign up for new student orientation um, right here on Beaver Base Camp, but you've got to confirm your enrollment, to actually tell us you're coming before that will show up on your checklist. Um, so we don't even start letting students sign up for orientation until May. Uh, you eventually, you will see that you've actually got a financial aid award here and uh, be able to link out to it to see that award, accept it, those sorts of things. Um, Colleen's gonna talk about our scholarship reevaluation process. And then um, you will also have the chance, again, in the summer to provide uh, proof of immunizations here uh, in Beaver Base Camp, as well as we will remind you to provide final transcripts uh, if you've got any college transcripts, doing dual credit, that sort of thing. Um, if you've taken AP or IB uh, exams and have scores, these things will show up on your, um, your checklist towards the end of the year as a reminder to provide those to us at that time. So keep checking your checklist because it does evolve and change over time. That's probably the really long way to say that. Uh, a couple, very last things, and then I'll, I'll be quiet and uh, let Colleen talk. But um, for those of you who have been admitted to uh, our Corvallis campus, our main campus, as well as OSU Cascades in Bend, uh, you will also have a checklist item that says you need to uh, declare your campus. Uh, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this even before you confirm your enrollment, but we encourage you just as soon as you know that you might may be doing one campus over the other um, to let us know that because it, it will affect the checklist items that show on your uh, in, in Beaver Base Camp. And you might actually see, for example, housing, what looks like two checklist items because one's for Corvallis and one is for uh, Cascades. So as soon as you know that we can clean up your uh, checklist items and you know just have you do the things that, that really matter. Um, and I have already talked about the ways through Beaver Base Camp that you can add degree partnership program, defer, cancel your admission and uh, change your major. But again, just a reminder, you can do all of that after you've been, now that you've been admitted, you can even do all of that after you've confirmed your enrollment. So uh, that will be available to you really until you set foot on campus um, in September. Okay, so with that, take a drink of my tea here. I'm gonna turn it over to Colleen to talk about the good stuff, uh, scholarships and financial aid. Thank you, Noah. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, as Noah said, I'm Colleen Kniff. I'm the Director of Scholarships at OSU. So we're going to talk just quickly about scholarships and financial aid. So generally speaking, um, the information that you may have already received about scholarships is with our scholarships that are awarded based on your admissions application. And that is a large portion of the scholarships that OSU offers. We do ask that you accept those awards no later than May 1st. You're welcome to start accepting them now. You can wait until April 30th if you want to. It is not something that expires anywhere in between. It also does not commit you to attending OSU. So as Noah said about the Honors College and some of these other things, it basically just lets us know that you are interested and you want us to hold that funding for you. So you're welcome to accept the scholar any scholarship awards anytime between now and May 1st. Um, we are in the process of creating um, a process for you through Beaver Base Camp so that if you have um, an increase or an improvement in your GPA based on your mo most recent terms that you're completing in high school, you will have a way of letting us know that so that we can potentially reconsider you um, for scholarship support. So more details will come about that, but there will be a mechanism for you letting us know if there's been a change in your GPA. Um, an important note for everybody to keep in mind is that any scholarships you are awarded at admission are all renewable for up to four years of support. So you'll get details about that renewability um, when you get your scholarship award letter in the mail. But just to keep in mind, that's not a one-year award. Those are four-year awards that are good for up to 12 terms of support. 
I think Noah has to advance the slide. Can I do that? There we go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so scholarships for our Oregon residents, uh, there, there are two main scholarships that we offer for our, our Oregon resident students. The first is the Finley Academic Excellence Scholarship. This is awarded at admission, and again, based on your admission application, so you don't need to do anything extra to have been considered for this. And these awards um, run up to $5,000 per year. Again, renewable, so a total value of up to $20,000 over four years. The Presidential Scholarship is our most competitive scholarship for Oregon residents. Again, does not require anything beyond the admission application that you already filed. We have all the information we need, but we do consider students for these awards between now and the end of February. So we haven't made any notifications yet. Um, if you meet these eligibility requirements and have either a 3.85 or above unweighted high school GPA or 4.20 and above weighted high school GPA, either or, you will be automatically considered for the presidential scholarship, which is $10,000 a year, $40,000 over four years, and we'll be announcing those awards in March. So just keep an eye on Basecamp, watch your mail. If you're selected for presidential, we'll be letting you know in March. So scholarships for non-residents. If you are not a resident of Oregon, we love you too and still hope you will come and join us at Beaver Nation. So the, we have two scholarship opportunities for non-resident students. The first is the Provost Scholarship, awarded at admission based on your admissions application, no extra steps. And these are available to residents of any state other than Oregon. So there are no limitations on, you know, whether you're from the West Coast, the East Coast, anywhere at all, we're gonna consider you equally for this Provost Scholarship. These awards range up to $12,000 a year for a maximum of 48,000 over four years. And then beyond that, we also have the WUI scholarship. This is our most competitive scholarship for non-residents. So also awarded at admission, these would have been part of your admission notification and the information you'll receive in the mail. Uh, WUI, for those of you who aren't familiar, is the Western Undergraduate Exchange. It's a program that 17 US states and territories participate in. If you are from one of those other 16 states or territories, because Oregon is one, you'll be automatically considered for WUI. Um, and if you are awarded WUI, what it does is it reduces your tuition cost to 150% of resident-based tuition. So um, dramatic savings there. And I know that people are always very curious. These awards were offered at admission, so just to, to say that again. And right now we're tracking at about 10% of the students admitted from each state um, are receiving this award, just to give you a sense of how those are managed. Okay, so the next one. Um, other scholarship opportunities. So beyond anything you've already been offered, we um, do have a whole abundance of other scholarships. Our donors are very generous and love our students. So we have more than 2,000 other scholarships available. Um, and that ends up being about $10 million more that gets awarded every year to students. The eligibility requirements for those and the amounts of the specific awards will vary. Um, so it's you know, hard to say at this point what any one student would receive, but it's definitely worth throwing your hat in the ring. We encourage all students to apply before February 15th if they are able. We don't have any deadlines before that time. So if you're able to complete your application and submit it before the 15th, you'll be considered for every scholarship for which you're eligible. There are later deadlines as well. So if for any reason you miss the 15th, not all hope is lost, you should still submit your application. You'll be considered for anything that is still open at that point. There's an integrated feature in the Scholar Dollar system that will match you um, to external scholarships, third-party scholarships offered by uh, you know, organizations out in the community, national organizations, and provide you information about those and how to apply for them. We encourage you to apply every year through Scholar Dollars. The awards are mostly a single year award. So just like your FAFSA and your ORSA applying for financial aid, you wanna make sure that you make this part of your routine and apply every single year. There are a limited number of opportunities um, scholarship wise that are awarded outside of Scholar Dollars. So if you've already chosen um, a major or a discipline, you're welcome to reach out to your college or department to see what else they may offer. Though the majority of scholarships are awarded through Scholar Dollars. I think now we've got, thank you. Now we'll talk about financial aid, so switching over. Um, so if you're not already familiar, the FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid and the ORSA is for Oregon residents. It's the Oregon student aid application. Um, either one of those, if it applies to you, we strongly recommend that you submit those so that we can consider you for need-based aid and scholarships. Those would be federal, state, and institutional OSU assistance based on your need profile. 
Um, if you're not eligible to file a, for a FAFSA, you're quite possibly eligible to file an ORSA if you are from um, Oregon, so explore both opportunities. You'll be able to monitor your status of your applications in Beaver Basecamp, as Noah mentioned before. There'll be um, notifications there if there's more information we need from you or questions that we need you to answer. Our priority submission deadline for both of those types of applications is February 28th. And we have that there because there are some types of funds where the amount of money available is limited. So um, as long as you're in by February 28th, you'll be considered just like everybody else. After that, we do start to run out of funding in some cases. So prioritize getting that done before February 28th and make sure you accept any aid that you're offered by May 1st. And now we hand it back over to Noah. Okay, okay. Can interrupt with a couple of questions. Sure, of course. From, from the group. Uh, so one of the questions that came up uh, was having to do with the scholar dollars. And the question is, is there just one application that goes out to all OSU scholar dollar scholarships? Um, not quite. So, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the nice things about the scholar dollar system is it's going to be customized to each individual student. So it's going to ask you questions that are particular to you to qualify you for scholarships um, that you appear to be eligible for. So if we had only one application, you would have to answer every question on it for us to know what you um, are eligible for. But we actually look at your student record and we ask you questions, like I said, that are tailored to you to make sure that you get into the pools that you need to be in. So you may be asked to respond to a couple different applications within the system, but they're all going to be very brief. We're finding that most students are able to complete the entire application, all the parts of it, within a couple hours at the most, with a lot of students taking less than an hour. Great, thank you. Uh -huh. um, another question was about the, uh, so if a student received the Provo Scholarship, how would they go and accept that scholarship? Ah, okay, well, once your own it is activated, so that needs to be activated first, there is a link in Beaver Base Camp that will take you to um, the portal where you can review your scholarship awards and any financial aid you've been awarded. Too soon for that, it's coming later, but the scholarship awards are there. And there is a button there that you'll see that's marked as accept. So you just click on that. It's actually very straightforward. Um, if you have any difficulty finding it or knowing how to navigate that system, you can always contact my office. We'd be happy to help you. Another question about WUI. Uh... Is it possible for uh, students that enroll at OSU and didn't receive WUI this year, would they be able to get it in the future? Unfortunately, no. WUI is a scholarship that's offered at the time of admission. So um, if you don't receive it initially when you are admitted, it is not awarded to continuing students. Um, there are plenty of other opportunities on campus. And like I said, with scholar dollars, um, there. One thing that we find is that students, you know, the, the more that they're at OSU, their departments get to know them, they get more involved in their major, get more involved in campus. They um, tend to be more successful with those kinds of scholarships. So it does kind of balance out a little bit, but WUI is offered at admission only. Got it. And is there any, uh, do you have just a minute to talk about the um, GPA review process as far as whether or not uh, it may change a student from a provost to a WUI? Um, it could potentially. So, I mean, GPA is the, the factor that we give the heaviest consideration when we're determining what level of scholarship a student will receive and be offered. So potentially it could make a difference. Um, what I would generally say is that, you know, kind of the, the larger the change in your GPA, obviously the more impact it potentially could have. But I wouldn't want to dissuade anybody, you know, from going ahead and letting us know about a change in their GPA. So that process will be pretty straightforward through the portal once we've set that up. And um, we do welcome the submissions. You know, if you want to let us know there's been a change, we're happy to look at it. Yeah, let me let me add just one thing here, um, so that your your high school counselors don't shoot me. Um, <laughs> it, it, and that is just a reminder that um, you know if you go through this process and you say, hey, here's my mid year transcript, my GPA has gone up. Um, when you fill out this kind of form, right, you raise your hand um, thing that. Colleen is talking about, you'll be able to actually upload your unofficial transcript, mid-year transcript there. You don't need to go back to your high school and have them send like an official copy to us. Uh, in fact, we would prefer that you just uploaded an unofficial copy right there. So right. Um, we really only need a, an official copy of your transcript at the end of the year, um, or if we just tell you otherwise. So um, uh, if, if neither of those uh, pertain to you, then you can just give us an unofficial transcript and we'll work with that. 
Okay. I see a couple more questions in here, Blake. You want me to take a quick shot at them? If you've got one, yeah, sure. If you want to one of those. So um, for financial aid, just to give everybody a sense, um, we expect that probably the offers of the aid awards will be released in, starting in March. And so if you haven't been asked to provide any more information, if your file is ready to go, you'll probably see an offer in March. Financial aid is also hoping that they might be able to give some estimates sooner. So you might see an estimate even sooner than that, but the official awards will probably be in March. Um, and as far as the scholar dollars process and those awards, we will also start really releasing those decisions in March. Um, our committees start doing their work right around March 1st. And uh, once they begin that, it, you know, it'll be kind of a rolling basis. They, we do ask them to prioritize getting responses for students who are newly admitted because we know you're making your decisions. So our goal is to get any information to you about additional scholarships you've been awarded, um, hopefully no later than May 1. So you have that when you're, when you're making your decisions. And I see a question about WUI too. WUI is uh, renewable like the other scholarships. And in that case, um, what we're looking for is that you're making satisfactory academic progress and it will automatically renew every year as long as you're meeting that criterion. Great, thank you, Colleen. Thanks. Sure. Uh, I'm just gonna add one thing and I, my apologies if uh, Colleen uh, mentioned this, but for Oregon residents on your checklist, you're also going to see, it may be on there now, we were just putting it up today, uh, you're going to see uh, an opportunity to apply for scholars scholarships through the, uh, what is it, Office of Student Access and Completion or OSEC you might have heard. It's a kind of Oregon higher ed thing, and they uh, are kind of a clearinghouse for many, many different scholarships that are local and statewide uh, for attendance at um, most of the uh, universities and so forth in, in Oregon. So anyhow, um, uh, it, it is put there as a reminder that this is one other source for you to go out and apply for additional scholarships. Okay. All right, so housing and dining. I uh, won't spend a lot of time here. I mentioned that the application will be available starting February 10th. Uh, we anticipate that will be the same for both uh, Corvallis and Cascades campus. Uh, and um, at that point, you'll fill out the application. It doesn't cost you anything to do it. And again, it is not binding you to uh, enroll at OSU. It's just simply, I want to get on the list for housing if I decide to come there. Um, and know that there, there is kind of a priority system or has been in the past around room, uh, room matching, roommate selection, and so forth. It's based on when you do your application. So um, if you know you're going to come here, I guess the point is, you know, you want to do it sooner rather than later, but you don't have to do it, um, you know, until that May 1st deadline. Uh, and then after May 1st, some things start happening, and including the roommate matching process uh, and uh, then followed by room assignments. Uh, and that begins in, uh, in the middle of the summer in late June. The... Uh, I mentioned confirming your enrollment, um, and for many of you, that means making a $200 uh, deposit, which we call the advanced tuition deposit, or you'll hear us uh, or refer to it as the ATD. Uh, that deposit is, is exactly that. Um, it's a deposit. It applies as a credit towards your account when you start in the fall, and so it's not lost, lost money. It's not um, just a reservation fee. It's um, money that will apply towards your bill. Uh, the, uh, for some of you, you may qualify for a waiver uh, based on Pell eligibility, uh, veteran status, a number of different things. Um, the nice thing is when you go to confirm your enrollment, uh, there's a series of questions there and it will kind of identify whether or not you qualify for the waiver or if you need to make that, uh, that particular deposit. Uh, it is refundable. So if let's say you, I'm sure we'll all run out of here tonight and wanna pay this thing, uh, although you can't do it. Let's say January 15th, when that day rolls around, right? You wanna, you're ready to go, uh, you pay it, but somewhere in March or April, 
you know, a, another opportunity comes up that's too good to be true and you decide to go elsewhere, um, so long as you let us know by May 1st, uh, we'll refund the, the full $200 uh, deposit to you. After the first, it becomes non-refundable. And this is just our way to kind of know what our class is so we, that we can start to make plans for number of sections and you know room assignments and all those uh, sorts of things that we need to do, do over the summer. Uh, okay, great. Uh, then there is new student orientation. And again, this is down the road. Um, you, can't, uh, you can't even sign up until May. Uh, and you won't be able to sign up until you've confirmed your enrollment, which again, in most cases means you've paid, uh, you've done that deposit. Uh, but once you've done the deposit, May 1 has come and gone, uh, then th that's typically when registration begins. Uh, you know, depending on how it looks this summer, which we don't know, um, it, if, you know, if it's virtual, if it's in person, if it's some sort of mix, uh, you know, when it's been in person, uh, the, the earlier you sign, uh, sign up for orientation for start, uh, you know, the more options you have in terms of when you come to campus to do it. So, which can impact, you know, the availability of courses and, and those sorts of things. So um, if, if we're doing it in person, just know that, you know, if you're gung-ho and you're, um, uh, it, it typically opens right after May 1st um, and you can get on and uh, have your pick. All right. Uh, let's see, uh, virtual event opportunities. Uh, you know, this is one of those to do's. It's not certainly not mandatory, but you know, uh, what obviously we're finding this year is because of the pandemic, you know, since March, is that most of you probably have not been to campus, uh, particularly if you're out of state. And so we haven't, you haven't been able to see the sights and sounds and meet our students. and. Uh, get more in depth on our academic programs and so forth. Um, but we we have a really robust offerings um, of virtual opportunities for you. Um, you know everything from tours, which one of the things we do, which I think is cool, is you know we take our online tour and we kind of strip out the you know the pre recorded stuff, and we actually have a real student take you on that tour. And so they can talk about their experience. You can ask them questions, that sort of thing. So if you've not done that, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, we've got in for, you know, general information sessions. So if you really are uh, not sure about OSU or want to just learn more, there, that's a good opportunity. We'll have uh, some bigger events, uh, virtual events called Orange and Black Days. Uh, this spring, we're hoping to offer three or four of those. Uh, and there, you know, there'll be presentations and student panels from all different academic areas. You know, many of our students, our clubs, our organizations, uh, that sort of thing at, at that event. Um, and then there's uh, most everybody all across campus are offering kind of just standalone sessions, you know, uh, spend an hour with us to learn more about this or that. Um, housing does a really nice one. They also uh, have kind of a virtual tour that's available online and, and so forth. So these things are gonna really ramp up. They're, they're, if you go on now, they're gonna be pretty quiet, you know, until the first part of January, but they will begin to ramp up and many of them will be very specifically for admitted students. So um, to stay engaged with us uh, that way. Okay, I promised that we would put up these two slides here at the end again. So uh, if you do wanna take a screen shot or take a picture with your phone, you can do that. Um, like I said, Beaver Base Camp uh, shouldn't steer you wrong, but uh, I, especially knowing the things that will be down the road that you're not going to see right away, I think is, is helpful. So these are the things you can do now you'll see in Beaver Base Camp. And then again, these are the things that will be coming down the road in approximately 
uh, when you'll see them uh, there in Beaver Base Camp. Okay, uh, so you've got some contact information here for kind of key offices that you would likely, you know, have questions of um, at this point. Uh, my email address is noah.buckley at oregonstate.edu. So if you want to reach out to me um, personally, you can. As I mentioned, your admissions advisor that's assigned to you is in Beaver Base Camp. Um, they'll be a great resource for you as well. And with that, Blake, were there any burning questions here that I can an answer? I'm, I'm knocking out the last couple. So, uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, there was a question about if you end up deferring is, uh, let's see, do you keep your, uh, your scholarship or was that scholarship roll over to the next uh, when you come back? Um, so if you defer your admission to a later term in the same year, that scholarship offer is still valid. Uh, for that year if you just start like winter term or spring term instead of fall. If you defer all the way to the following year, um, in the past normally you would be reconsidered for whatever programs we're offering at that point because it can change year to year. That was a little bit different this year because of COVID, um, so it's hard for me to say exactly what will happen with fall 21. There'll be more information coming if there is a change, but under you know typical circumstances, um, we would defer your scholarship to a later term within the same year in the same form. And then if you applied or decided to come a full year later or beyond that, we would reconsider you for whatever scholarship programs we had available at that, that time. So that's the standard, uh, but there may, may be a change because of the pandemic and that would be posted on our website if there were a change. Great, all right. I think that's all the questions. Okay, very good. All right, hey, and we got, got done just a little over the 45 minute mark. So um, again, we will uh, find a way to make this recording available uh, to you. We look forward to hearing uh, from you, uh, your individual questions and seeing you on some of those virtual events. But again, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Congratulations on being ad admitted and uh, have a happy holidays. Bye everybody.